The Pentagon seemed caught off guard. As of this morning, officials in the Pentagon were reportedly scrambling to try to talk the president out of doing this. Uh, when the president tweeted the announcement anyway, the White House referred reporters to the Pentagon to get details on the withdrawal plan, uh, but the Pentagon didn't have any details. The Pentagon referred all questions back to the White House, and they said, didn't we tell you to go ask the Pentagon? At the State Department, they just decided they didn't want to talk about it at all. The State Department abruptly canceled its scheduled press briefing today, right after Trump made this announcement about pulling all U.S. troops out of Syria. NBC News national security reporter Courtney Kuby asked a senior administration official today what the president means specifically by making this announcement. When does this mean U.S. troops are leaving? Um, this was the response she got, quote, it's not that I'm not telling you, it's that I don't know, quite frankly. Helpful senior administration official. Uh, so we don't know if this surprise withdrawal is a thing that's actually going to happen. We certainly don't know when it's going to happen, if it is. But why did this happen all of a sudden? Why did this just get announced? I mean, I, and I ask that because on its face, the explanation the president gave is an explanation that's not true. I mean, the president today said, ISIS is gone. ISIS has been defeated. That's why we can leave. Well, the inspector general at the Defense Department just last month released a report on the current strength of ISIS. As of last month, the Pentagon estimate for ISIS fighters was 20 to 30,000 fighters just in Iraq and Syria. So it's not that the U.S. government has determined that ISIS is defeated, they're gone, therefore it's time to go. That's the explanation that the president gave today, but that's not it. That's not true. So what was it? The Wall Street Journal and others uh, have suggested that this happened today at the request of a foreign leader, at the request of the president of Turkey. Uh, which is rich, right? I mean, the day after Trump National Security Advisor Mike Flynn gets dragged all over a federal courtroom for, in the judge's words, basically betraying his country, selling out his country by secretly working as a paid foreign agent for Turkey, two days after Mike Flynn's business partner and their Turkish government contact got indicted for that scheme, the day after prosecutors described Mike Flynn in open court as an unindicted co-conspirator in that alleged crime, amid all these questions now circling around the Flynn case about why the Trump transition didn't care and went ahead and installed Flynn as national security advisor anyway, even after they were formally and repeatedly warned about Flynn being investigated as an unregistered paid foreign agent for Turkey. That's the day the president of Turkey says, hey, Trump, pull out of Syria now. And the president of our country says, yes, sir, I'll announce it right now, sir. I mean, the, the, the on the surface explanation from the president is not true. The other possible explanations for this, the ones being reported today in the news, are really dark. Uh, just when it comes to Turkey, just one of the countries that would want us out of Syria. Of course, the other countries that would want us out of Syria are the Syrian government, right? Iran, Russia. Russia, for its part, says that they are delighted by this blurted out new policy from President Trump today. But what can we know? Um, at this point as to whether this is really happening <laughs> um, and why this is really happening, um, but also what it's likely to do if this does actually become real policy and not just something the president tweeted and then everyone ignored. Joining us now is Rukmini Kalamaki, foreign correspondent for The New York Times. She's been covering al-Qaeda and ISIS. Rukmini, it's really nice to have you here tonight. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you, Rachel. So I know that you have you have reported both in Syria and and Iraq. I know you were just in Iraq a couple of weeks ago. Yes. Bottom line, what do you think the impact would be in Syria, in Syria and specifically with regard to ISIS? If the president's announcement is real, if they do follow through with this um, sort of precipitous withdrawal plan. Let me quote what what senior Western coalition officials told me today when I reached out to them to ask this very question. They described the president's announcement as, quote, catastrophic, quote, a disaster, quote, reckless. Um, mm. This is how they view this announcement. The Kurds, when I last traveled with them, which was, which was back in, in 2015, were not able to move an inch without U.S. support. They, they would take building after building, but only after U.S. air support um, had helped them bomb that location. If, uh, if the U.S. was not there, they would not have been able to advance. And even with U.S. support, we have seen that ISIS has been able to mount counterattack after counterattack and sometimes take back territory that has 
has been declared freed. So, so it's, it's, it's naive to think that this in any way is going to not have an impact on the fight against ISIS. So the, I mean, big picture here, we should just be clear for people who haven't been following this closely or people who have lost track over this eight year long civil war, uh, that there's a couple thousand U.S. troops in Syria. Their right. stated mission there is to fight ISIS. The way that U.S. troops are fighting ISIS in Syria is in partnership with the Kurds and car- right. partnership with Kurdish fighters who are believed by the U.S. military to be the most effective anti-ISIS force on the ground. Um, and if the U.S. is now going to leave, what you're hearing, what you just described, sure. is essentially devastation for the Kurds. Right. And, and that of course, raises the issue of why this is happening. There are multiple news organizations that are reporting tonight that the origin of this decision from the president didn't come from some sort of interagency process in the U.S. government, certainly did not come from the U.S. military or the people who are working on this as policy. It appears to have come in a suggestion from the Turkish president. What's the relationship between the Turkish government, the Turkish president, and the Kurds? Why might this have been in his interest? The Turkish, the Turkish state has viewed the Kurds as an existential threat. Um, the group that is currently fighting ISIS is a conglomeration of, of, of Kurdish uh, entities, one of which is the YPG. The YPG is just another name for the PKK, um, which is an entity that has been declared a terrorist organization by Turkey. They have carried out attacks in, in Turkey. Um, and, so, and so for a, a long time now, we have seen that, that Turkey views this entity as its number one enemy, really, in the region. Rukmini Kalamaki, foreign correspondent for The New York Times covering al-Qaeda and ISIS. Rukmini, I really appreciate you making time to be with us tonight. Thank you very much for this. Thank you, Rachel. I should tell you um, <clears throat> that Nancy Pelosi put out a statement tonight on the withdrawal of troops from Syria. Um, I'll just read you a piece of it that is maybe important and relevant to this discussion. Quote, all Americans should be concerned that this hasty announcement was made on the day after sentencing and criminal proceedings began against the president's former national security advisor, Mike Flynn, who admitted that he was a registered foreign agent for a country with clear interests in the Syrian conflict. The clear interests in the Syrian conflict, as just laid out there by Rukmini. All right, Senator Claire McCaskill is here for the interview tonight. I'm very excited to have her here. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.